everyone. My name is Michael, um, and I'm going to talk to you about SMS with CVCRM. And we're going to try and do it in 25 minutes. Okay, is everyone hear me okay? Yep. All right. Let me know if I let me know when it gets to 20 minutes, and I'll speed up. Okay. Just qu quickly, do, it, who here is using SMS in CVCRM at the minute? Okay, not too many people. And how, how many people are using Civi CRM already? Okay. All right, great. So I would say SMS really, it's a, I would say it's an underused part of Civi CRM. And what I want to do is show you that actually it's pretty easy to use and set up and show you some of the cool things that you can do with it. And I'm going to be talking about SMS out of the box in CVCRM and also about an SMS conversation extension that uh, I recently developed for an uh, organization called the National Democratic Institute who are based yeah, in the okay. US. So. Okay, so getting started. Um, so an SMS provider is basically like a third party service that sends SMS and sends and receives SMS on your behalf. So the idea is that you would sign up for a service to, to do that. And that what, the SMS, what that service does is when someone sends an SMS to a number, it will put that SMS into Civi CRM. And if you want to send an SMS to a number, you'll talk to that service from Civi CRM. You'll just say, send an SMS. That would send, tell this service to send an SMS to that person. So these kind of these services they live like in the cloud if you like they're not part of your CV CRM you just sign up for a, a, a service with someone and the th the three the th well the the two ones that you can use at the minute are well the, are Twilio and Clickertel um, that that you can you can download those via the UI there's another um, extension called Telerivet that I'll talk about um, a bit later and that's a, that's another one that I would suggest you have a look at. So when, when you want to convey that something is easy to set up, you normally say it's easy as one, two, three, right? and you say there's three steps. So that's what I'm going to try and tell you today. The first thing you would do is you'd go to your provider and uh, sign up there. So I'm going to show you what it looks like at Twilio. Okay, so the in the network is slow, um, so maybe so I may just pretend. Um, what you do there is you'd, you'd sign up. There's a nice easy form. You sign up. You get what's called an API key, and you and uh, choose what phone number you want to use. And then you go into your Civi CRM and you'll download and install the extension. Hmm. Okay, I'm I'm gonna maybe okay. So I guess I, I go to you guys have seen this screen before. Have people seen this screen before? This is the screen where you can download extensions. So um, here's a list of all the extensions you can download and. Um, you'll see on this site I've already uh, installed, Twilio, installed Twilio. Okay, so what well, I might change network actually. Let me see. Uh, 
Yeah, probably. Okay, hopefully this, oh, that will no, work a bit better. But basically, you'll sign up for your sign up with the SMS provider. They'll provide you with a, a kind of a username and password if you like. You enter that into Civi CRM, and then you can, then you're ready to go. Um, if you want to, so you can need, you can send and receive SMS with Civi CRM. If you want to receive SMS, there's a little extra bit of setup you want to do. Um, it's easy to do, I won't go into it because of the, the network, but um, you'll need to do it. Okay, so this at this point you can send and receive SMS, so if you're, if you're up for it, you can get your phone out and send any SMS you want to this number. It can be something very witty and original, <laughs> if you like. You can tell me a joke. <laughs> Or you could just say hello. Or you don't have to do anything. But if people want to, people, if at least some people send an SMS, that's going to make the next part of my presentation a bit easier. I'll send over. Okay, hang on. Okay, well, since, okay. What, uh, um, yeah, are you on EE? Yeah. So okay. am I. So have I, but it's just nothing's happening. Do you want to, if you, I'll try your net, well, no, I can actually, I, can, I do have a local copy as well, so I can show you most of this local. Okay. Maybe at some point we'll be able to see those SMSs as they come in. Let's not worry about it for the minute. Let me talk about how, how you might, why you would choose a provider. So um, Twilio and Clickertel and Telerivet, these three providers have an integration that works. They've been integrated with CiviCRM, so they're good, a good choice to. They're a good choice. One of the questions you want to ask yourself is, what countries am I going to use it in? If you're using it just in the UK, then that's fine. They both provide those services. If you're planning on using it in different countries, you'll want to make sure that they support the country that, you are, that you're planning on using it in. And the other thing that's key is the two-way number, two -way number ability, availability. So some of them will allow you to send SMS um, but not receive it, and others will allow you to send and receive SMS, and that varies per service and per country. So you want to have a um, one that works for you. Obviously the other thing that you want to consider is pricing. I won't go into it, but as you can imagine, most of them have a, a combination of a fixed monthly price and then a price per SMS. Of course, the other, the other option you could have if you want to use a particular SMS service is, is you could you write your own integration or get someone to do that for you. But if you just want to get going, the best thing to do is um, use the integration, one of the integrations that's already there. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about Telerivet. So this is a new integration um, that I, we, we wrote for a client um, just this year. And it works a little bit differently to other SMS providers. What Telerivet allows you to do is turn any smartphone that you have into an SMS gateway. So um, the idea would be that you would you'd, you'd get your phone, you download the Telerivet app, and then you connect that up to that would connect to your Civi CRM, and then you can use that phone to send and receive SMS. Um, via CVCRM. 
and that's like, that's nice. And the, and the reason we wrote this is because the the um, we were working with people that were wanting to send SMSs in countries where the availability of two-way providers is really limited. So with this, you could just turn any phone into a um, an SMS gateway and then send and receive SMS anywhere in the world. Does that make does that make sense to people? I probably said most of these bullet points now. Um, it's, al it's also useful if you have an, let's say you're already using a, a mobile phone just on your office desk to send SMS and you want to carry on using that number, uh, but do it via CBCRM. And this is kind of handy for that situation as well. The only thing you want to be aware of is that Telerivit charges you in addition to your mobile operator. So, you, so maybe you get free text with your your network provider, but you'll also be charged by Telerivit just to kind of connect it. Um, and also, since it is a mobile phone, it may not, if you're sending out millions of texts, you've got to, if you imagine all of those texts have to go through your mobile phone, so it might, if you're sending out loads of texts, it might not be a good choice for you. But. Okay, so the next thing I want to, did, did people send texts? Okay, let me see if I'm, um, Uh, I'll check. Anyone got a Wi-Fi? Another Wi-Fi network? I can try just in case. Maybe not, if there's one that isn't on EE, that might be good. Unless, if, if in fact, if you've got good internet, yeah, okay. Let me try. Okay, let me try Pete. Pete the last. What's it called? iPhone seven. People say you should never do live demos. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, anyhow. Okay, so while, while hopefully we're going to get some internet, I'm going to go on to the next, the next demo. Um, so, we wrote, so we wrote this extension called S SMS Conversations. Um, and, sorry. Do you want to sit there first? Can I see the password? Oh, okay, fantastic. So let's have a look at the SMS. Oh, brilliant. So you can see here, what I've done is I've made a report, a hilarious report. Um, live demos are risky, very true. Um, sorry to be boring. Why, what, why, and can't climb trees? A fridge. Very good. Um, okay. I'm not going to read any. Anyway, anyway, fantastic. What you might what you might notice here is that we, we've got so we've got all the numbers and we've got a load of inbound SMS. I'm going to um, choose to reply to this person. So you'll notice that this person um, they've got a kind of a funny contact name based on their mobile phone number because that's all we know about them at the minute. So I'll just quickly send them a SMS. Uh, hopefully they've, this person has their phone not on silent or hear a nice SMS sound. I think they said nice presentation, so I'm just going to say thank you. Okay, so you can see it says, Hey, okay. Should have, I should have had a dramatic silence for that. <laughs> okay, so that's not, so that's nice, obviously, but it requires user intervention every time you want to send an SMS. And what we did is we wrote this extension called SMS Conversations, which allows you to automate questions and answers. It's good for surveys and questions, as, uh, questionnaires, as you might expect. Um, 
It's also good for kind of confirming and updating information, like this is, this is the email address we have for you, is it correct, or things along those lines. I don't know if you're familiar with choose your own ending adventure stories? Yeah. You know those ones where like you have to, you meet an ogre in a glade, do you fight him or do you run away? It's also really good for making those, um, if you want to, and probably good for other things as well, but so anything where you want to kind of have a, you know, a series of questions and answers. So here's a really, here's a really simple example. Uh, how was the conference? Great. Would you go again? Definitely. Any other comments? Oh, the food was rubbish. Which is the number one bit of conference feedback <laughs> in, in my experience. But anyhow, here's a, just, here's a quick look at what that looks like in Civi Serum. I'll make it a bit bigger. So this is, fairly, this is fairly simple. You can see we're saying, how was, how was the conference? And then whatever they, regardless of whatever they say, so they can say anything, we'll get a question two. We'll say, would you go again? Doesn't matter what they say, we'll say, go to question three. So you, you can see there's a few other things you can do here, and I'll talk about those in a minute. But that's the kind of the basic example. OK, so some, just to go through some of the other things you can do. Any reply that they send you, you can add that to a, a contact field. So like maybe they, you ask them what their name is, you can add that to the name field. Uh, you can also add contacts to groups depending on what they've, dep either like regardless or depending on what they said. So like, do you want to join the newsletter group? If they say yes, you can add them to the newsletter group. You can also use tokens in text, so you can address them by their name or anything you know about them. And you can also branch based on the answers they give you. So that's why, if you, that's how you would make your own, choose your own ending adventure stories using that branching. Okay, so here's a quick example of branching. So you say, can you drive a car? Maybe you need people to drive around. They say yes. And then you're going to ask them if they have any points on their license. Um, and they say no. But obviously you wouldn't want to ask them that question if they can't drive a car. So if they say, no, I can't drive a car, you might ask them something else, like, can you fly a plane? And then they say, yes, they can fly a plane. Okay. okay, so this is the second demo. This picture is probably too cute. I should have drawn a more edgy picture. But um, if you text pets to the same number, you will, uh, you know, enjoy the fun. This is more fun than the last one. I'll leave that number there for the minute. And in fact, actually, while you're doing that, I'll have a... Oh, I'm sorry. I'll give you maybe, like, 20 more seconds to get this number down. Are people getting... T is anyone getting any texts? Yeah. Okay, good. So just, if you go through, if you go through that, while you're distracted, I'm going to explain some more important things. <laughs> okay, so what, one of the things you'll notice now is that for some of these people, we've got, their, we've got information about their names, because the first two questions were asking you what your name is. And so those, those, that information has gone straight back into their record and kind of gets updated automatically, which is nice. Um, I'm going to pick on someone, Anna Horsley. Looks like she's ahead. Um, okay. Well, has anyone complete? Has anyone finished it? Uh, it, will, it, will say, it will say something like thanks. Okay, what's your, what's your name? Phil. Phil. Are you Phil? Let's have a look at Phil. Do you have any cats or dogs, Phil? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not exciting then. Okay, what I'm going to do actually, instead of that, I'm going to go to my group of dog owners and have a look. So there's two people in this group. Oh, it's just me and Hannah. 
<laughs> trying to get my group of cat owners then, maybe there's someone in there. Oh, six people with a cat. Okay. So Dave Morton has a cat. So he's in my group of cat owners and if we're lucky, we'll find out his cat's name is Mr. What a nice name for a cat. Okay, so that's kind of demoing a few different things you can do with this. Let's go back behind it and kind of see what this looks like. So I've got to check, I've got to, well actually let's have a look at the, let's have a look at your conversation. So here is my, here's my list of all the conversations that I have defined in Civi CRM. So there's a kind of a boring conference feedback one and then there's this more interesting pet survey. And so I'll just go through a few of these things. So this one says, similarly it says, what's your first name? And it, as first thing it does is adds whatever that is to the field first name and then it will go on to the next question. More, okay, so here's an interesting one. It says, are you more of a dog person or a cat person? This one, if it contains the word dog, you go to four. If it contains the word cat, go to five. So that's nice because it means you can say, I'm more of a cat person and you don't have to say cat or anything. Obviously, if you said, I hate cats, that doesn't quite work. We might need to refine it a bit. But that, that's the idea of, of that. Um, here we've got a, um, do you ha this is, so if you answered that you're a dog person, I ask you, do you have a dog? Um, this one's more of an exact match. And you can see here, these are the different options that I get. And you can see here, there's an invalid text. So for every question that you define, you say, these are the answers that I expect. And if I don't get one of those, I need, I'll ask the question again. So if anyone said I'm more of a cow person, they would have, they would have got a question saying, you know, can you just please say cat or dog? Something like that. Okay. Um, then just the, the last bit here, there's, this is how we're adding them to the cat group as well. Okay. Oh, actually one thing else I want to show you. He, this, is the la this is the last text you'll get. And it says, thanks for letting me know contact first name. So that's the same as a token that you would see in CiviMail. And obviously, because we asked what your first name was, we can then use it again. I mean, but even if we already knew your first name, we don't have to ask it in this text, you know. Any field, we can use it as a token. Okay, so we can update fields, add people to groups. We also added some custom field data. We use tokens. We branch based on the answers. Oh, let me show you. Let me show you a conversation. So, for, on, in each contact, we can actually view the conversation. So I can see here with Dave Morton. Um, here he's got one SMS conversation, and if I have a look at it. <coughs> I can see all the answers that he gave, and that's the kind of the flow through the conversation. If he gave some wrong answers, it also see that show you the wrong answers as well that you get. It also shows that it's it's completed, and it, you know, so like the, so like it may be not the may the conversation may be ongoing. If it is, then you can't start another conversation at the same time. That that kind of thing. But okay. So the, only, the one thing I didn't show you is about you, how the conversation got started there. So that conversation was started when you texted in pets. Right. So that, um, that part happens with a trigger. I don't know if people are familiar with Civi rules, but the, the idea of this Civi rules, it's another extension. The idea is that you can text, um, sorry, the idea of Civi rules is like something happens Depending on what that thing that happened, you can trigger something else to happen. So it's a very generic extension, and we use it in this case to say, when I receive an SMS with the text pets, start the pet survey. So let me just quickly show you how that works. So here's the, here's the rule, if I show you down here. I can, um, so whenever, whenever, an active, whenever I get an inbound SMS with um, an exact match to pets, then I 
schedule an SMS conversation. So that could happen based on anything. It could be you could be like whenever someone donates over a thousand pounds, I schedule an SMS conversation or anything like that. So the idea is that you can start these conversations whenever any on you know on pretty much most CBCRM events. Okay, so that's kind of the end. I don't know how, how am I doing for the time. I think I'm okay. How am I? Is it? Oh, no, I'm not okay. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Clickatel and Twilio, you can download those directly from the Civi Serum user interface. SMS conversation and Teleribit, they're both published in the Civi Serum extensions directly. So you can't. It's fa it's a fairly easy task of installing them. They're ready to be used, but you can't just download them automatically. And that's it, so thank you.